Testing, 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 testing. You'll never find as long as you search. I'm not moderating, I'm supposed to be speaking. Are you guys serious? None of my other speakers? Dude, thank you, Jesus, come on. Is okay. Wait, we got BBA Sam. Who are we missing? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we don't have a moderator. He's the moderator. Hello, hello, we go. Hello. hello, hi, welcome. Thank you. That was smooth. That's how we do. Yeah, we're all here. We're all here. <laughs> all right, cool. Hey, why don't we uh, why don't we wrap up conversations and uh, let's get started here. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to the sound of my voice. Yes, you, Ari, Fernando, Lucas, Stefania. Okay, Sander, by the bar, calm down. We'd like to welcome you guys uh, to the What Art Will Be Remembered in a Hundred Years talk. Now, I don't know how it's supposed to go, uh, but you know we're gonna try to entertain the best we can because there are some very cool minds up here and uh, you deserve us. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, gonna be a little fluid, I think. All right, why don't we do a quick round, just uh, who you are and... Uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm a BBA, I'm a collector, and I also, I'm also a founding member of the Doom DAO, um, which is a DAO uh, aiming at collecting uh, and promoting uh, ex-copy works. Fidel Amos, uh, Fidel Everywhere. I, I guess I'm known now for brunches and sponsoring other artists and kind of finding support and things like that, but I started as a photographer. Been doing that about 25 years, jumped into the NFT space, and uh, now I collect and kind of get my hands in all things Web3. Hey, I'm Edward. I'm an artist and collector, uh, and I'm working both in digital art and also traditional art world. Hey everybody, I'm Sam. I'm a musician and curator, uh, curating Crypto Portal Gallery in Prague and also working on upcoming digital gallery Pointless. Um, I'm also a collector and artist and happy to be here with you guys. Cool. I'm Patrick, I make art. Yeah. Let's go. Let's man. Um, yeah, so they, they, gave us, they gave us this topic, um, what art will be remembered in 100 years. Um, and uh, I, think it's a, I think it's an interesting question. Um, you know, I know that we, we talk to a lot of traditional collectors coming in space, and uh, it's one of the biggest issues for people is like, will the tech hold up? What will last? You know, the time horizons for a lot of people are greater than 20 years, and I know our time horizons are like, basically like one day. You know, did it go up or did it go down? I'm gonna sell, right? So there's like a there's a there's a disconnect there, and I think it's just interesting to talk about like what elements make up art that will last, what elements will make up kind of artists that will last, projects that will last, uh, and the the panel up here uh, is, is a, a diverse group of perspectives, uh, and these these uh, everyone here is uh, I know uh, really appreciate their opinions online. There's like a lot of people with some like well thought out and you know I say controversial opinions but usually it's just like somebody says something that's honest and it becomes controversial. Um, so, no, we'd love, to, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear kind of what, um, what it is that you think will ultimately matter um, in a longer time horizon kind of with what we're all doing right now. Yeah, I can start maybe with something very obvious but very overlooked. 
uh, for art to be remembered in 100 years, it has to still, still exist. And um, right now, like um, I guess a lot of people, even uh, collectors, serious collectors, are not aware that, um, that NFT data are sometimes stored on uh, centralized servers. Even IPFS, you would think, oh yeah, this is um, uh, this will be here forever, but it's actually not the case. So yeah, it, there's really a technical part of it that's uh, very overlooked, and uh, I think it's uh, some artists are doing the, the 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 work, some effort, yeah, to put data on chain, to have work on chain, um, and it's it's uh, getting more and more there. But yeah, I think it, this will be the first thing, and uh, I know there's um, Artnomi has been working on um, on a tool with Club NFT, where you can actually uh, save your um, save your NFTs. Because yeah, there has been stories of uh, some early work, uh, for example, ex ex copy works that uh, yeah disappeared, and so you you're just left with a, a token that's uh, pretty much worthless. So yeah, but this one was easy. Yeah, so. No, I think that's I think that's great. I think it's, it's an interesting point about IPFS too. I think there's just a lot of technology out there that we all kind of just hope, pray works. <laughs> hey, he knows. And we'd rather just not talk about it. You know, like IPFS is like two technologies they don't own cobbled together, and we just kind of pray that it's the decentralized thing that will last forever. Um, so I think, and if that, Fidel that makes IPFS, a counterpoint, IPFS for you. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think this, I think it's a great point. <laughs> When I'm really nervous, I do shit like this to kind of draw attention to myself, to have an excuse to be really nervous. I'm just really nervous. And long. I'm comfortable. I feel like I'm not, I need a bean bag. I'm so, yeah, okay. I'm sorry I cut you off. Well, what, what, do you, uh, what do you think will make the difference between <laughs> is... art that is popular now we... and art that'll actually be popular and matter in a hundred years. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a real realistic realism person. I don't think anything we do right now as artists will matter like we think it matters now, 20, 50, 80 years from now. I don't think Michelangelo, uh, I don't think uh, uh, Mozart, I don't think any of those guys were like, this will be timeless. You know what I mean? So, will some art matter? Yeah, this, you, we all know that this, we're just having a nice conversation about an impossible question. It's impossible, it's impossible. But I think being in the art world and creating art that continues to catch the attention of the generations who will eventually decide where the art goes, what's gonna be important, what's gonna be worth something, that's the important thing. If we stopped, if we somehow were shunned and arrested for art as some people are in parts of the world, if we were suffocated and we couldn't create work and little by little the art died and never came back, that would be horrible. So all we can do really is create and hope that, you know, I really just want to do my thing. Like I've always just wanted to do my thing when, you know, I was 10, when I was 20, when I was 30. It's cool that people see that. I think it's glorious that we all have an opportunity where artists can shine like we're shining. But I don't think we're all sitting down thinking, I hope my stuff is on the walls in 100 years. I hope it's, you know, put on neon in the future 500 years next to, you know, OSF wrecked. I, I think it's just, we need to keep making it and the world will eventually decide what that is all worth and where it's all going. But it's great to talk to you guys, man. Like, it's great to hang out and, you know, discuss it. It will change. It will change over time. I love it. And also, like, the aspect, uh, if we asked this question 100 years ago, it would be about the preservation of it. And even though IPFS isn't perfect and we're still figuring out how to put everything on chain, we still don't have to have that as the main topic of what art will be remembered. It doesn't have to be made of marble. It doesn't have to be preserved in a museum. And we also have the question of what art will be seen by the most people or like what makes it to these famous galleries. And we don't have that anymore with the like technology of advancements with social media and how we're sharing our art all the time. And now I think it's really about the ideas, like what ideas will be remembered in a hundred years and what artists will be the truest to their ideas and be able to push their ideas the farthest and be able to 
as Fidel says, do you. If you can really preserve your ideas and preserve yourself, that I think will be what's remembered. Yeah, I'd like to provide a, a few perspectives on the storage issue, one that is technical and one that is uh, artistic. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, IPFS, yes, obviously has some drawbacks because some nodes can fall down and no one's going to help you. You're going to be the one uh, responsible for fixing it, whereas a protocol like Rweave, even though it's maybe 10% of NFTs, if it all falls down because it's supposed to be permanent, someone is bound to try to fix it because it's going to be too many NFTs to fail in a way. But that's the technical aspect of it. But from an artistic point of view, I, I think that important art will be preserved in some way, the same way that uh, physical art is preserved by museums. So the art that will matter in the future, they will just take, make sure that uh, uh, the technology doesn't fail and they will find a solution to fix it. Mostly. Mostly. I agree with your point. So I, I think like, I mean, you know, like with, uh, like you mentioned, with like Rare Art Labs and Ascribe, gone. You know, if people don't take the appropriate steps to preserve art before it dies, it can be lost, you know, irrevocably. You know, that's one of the nice things about, you know, having keys is that we have control, but it, you know, it comes with some downsides too, because it works the same with the platforms. Um, and I, I appreciate what you said about the ideas. Um, kind of combo that with what Fidel said. Um, we don't know, ultimately, what is gonna matter, but I think it really comes down to enduring social relevance. Does the art that we make now, will that resonate with people 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now? The art that is endured, the art you see in MoMA, the art you see in the museums around the world, is art that captures usually the moment. Not somebody looking back on the moment, usually the moment, right? It's commenting on culture. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that we care about is stuff that somebody said 100 years ago that actually still makes sense today. And you look back and you're like, wow, that was actually very relevant to now, and that's why the art continues to endure. So I think, yeah, like, while we kind of just, we make what we want to make as artists, I think ultimately kind of what it comes down to is what still matters down the road. And I think now, then, always comes back to like, does this art impact anybody in the real world? Does this art make a difference? And if it doesn't, uh, I don't think it has, I don't think the legs will go very far. And I think just ultimately, you know, kind of like what Sam said, it's just really going to come back to like good concepts, relevant concepts, and kind of enduring relevance as the primary, you know, primary factor in, you know, is it going to be around or not? I, want, oh, sorry. No, I think art history has shown both examples. You can have uh, artists that are remembered because they were relevant in their day and they are like in the top 10 artists of that decade and are remembered for that reason. And on the other side, you are the artists that were maybe not popular at all, but they were like rediscovered because artistry is being rewritten all the time and because they become relevant later. And so I, I think you can't really predict because it could be one of those two cases. I think it's a good point. I think, I, think, I think artists can be discovered in advance and you see a lot of artists get discovered at age 80. A lot of them, a lot of them find like posthumous recognition, which I hope for us, but I also kind of hope not for us. You know, that would be, that would be nice. I, I wanted to piggyback on what you said earlier because you said that the, the art that has longevity that has an impact somewhere in the world, I totally agree with that. But I find as I get older, uh, it's interesting how many things are simply passed because of heritage, culture, you know, uh, family. Like I, I have photos going back 100 years, you know, thanks to my grandparents and things like that. And somehow timelessly, those things that we somehow keep in our lives that have nothing to do with art, they later become art, simply because, you know, uh, if you dig up uh, any kind of civilization, you find, oh, this was a, a, you know, a shaving bowl, and this was a, you know. So sometimes art becomes a different style of itself, even to the point where we didn't think it would be, you know, which is cool as well. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. It's, sometimes you listen to, to songs and uh, that were made uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and you said, oh, wow, this is still very relevant today. And so I guess for, for art, if you manage to do the same, then yeah, yeah you have some change to be yeah, remembered for, yes, decades and centuries. But yeah, one thing I'd like to um, uh, maybe to add, because yeah, in 100 years, prob probably all of us will be dead, most likely. Yeah. And, um, and so I think, yeah, how do you um, make sure your, your art outlasts you? Um, 
And so I, I guess there's a lot of things, you know, right now uh, it, it died a little bit, but uh, a lot of art was about uh, sometimes utility or hype, you know, drops, birds and stuff. And I think one good way to see what art will uh, can still be relevant in, uh, yeah, in many years, decades, or centuries, is to think, okay, what happens if the artist is not tweeting every, um, every few days to, to push a new drop or something? Uh, because, yeah, at some point it will happen. Uh, the artist won't be there. So it's either you, have the, you can have a community that's continuing to push the work, to uh, promote, to, um, uh, yeah, maybe exhibition either online or even IOL. And I believe, yeah, at some point maybe we, you also need the institution, even though, uh, yeah, blockchain art, crypto art sometimes uh, try to go against the institution, but to, to be, to last for, like, to have a real um, imprint, a real uh, impact, uh, maybe in the world, maybe you, we need those, you know, so which is a bit, uh, yeah, a bit, yeah, a bit um, ambiguous because it's sometimes some, some, something we, the, the space try to, to fight here, yeah, so. Yeah, we're in a pretty niche space right now as well, and this is definitely like a, mainly like tech conference. We're talking a lot about the technology, and I think that we can identify with this technology. Like, we all can say that, like, we are using NFTs, that we're like NFT artists. And a lot of these like different identities is what makes the art remembered. Like you have different nationalities and you can say that you're like part of this nationality and you're the like first like photographer or for, uh, made it in this specific country. So I think the identity with the technology is also something that will help the art be remembered. And I think different identities with different aspects of the medium or the kind of feeling or the kind of technology or tools you use also can contribute to what's remembered. And, and we're not even considering art that it doesn't even exist yet. Like 20 years ago, there was no AI competitions and galleries and you know robots doing art. So there's gonna be mediums we haven't even heard of in 10, 20, 30 years. Well, I, th I think I think I think it's an interesting point. You talk about you talk about the different nationalities, you talk about like you talk about family photos and so forth, ultimately becoming the art. Um, I think it all just comes down to story. Um, and that is what tells a story, and that often tells a more interesting story than the art, right? And that's why it becomes the art. And like with yours, you talk about the nationalities, you talk about the space, you talk about how many people here are able to participate in the art world that wouldn't be able to if we didn't have digital technology, right? The art world is very exclusive and generally located in four cities. You know, that's not accessible to a lot of people. Um, so kind of what we have here, I think, tells a very interesting story. And I think at the end of the day, when we go back and say, Tell me, tell me what was interesting about art 20 years ago, 50 years ago. I think it always, always, always comes back to stories and narratives, like, and what stories are resonant with the future audiences. And stuff like that matters. Like, the nuances matter. Getting into the details matters. And I think those are just really important to just, as artists, just be sure to, like, just make sure you get that out there. Make sure people know you. Make sure you know your art. Art and artists are inseparable. And if people don't know you, I don't think they can understand your art. So I just think it's really important for longevity, for durability, for connecting with people, just to think about your story as the most kind of important element of the art itself and let that carry the art. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you will think it relates to the subject. I think it also, I'm, I would be curious to have your opinion about something uh, because we're mainly here to talk about digital art, right? And uh, do you think that uh, digital art will be remembered in 100 years because it, it, it was its own thing that became bigger and wider or because it was uh, like integrated into traditional art or definitely and I think that the like great part of NFTs is that they legitimize digital art in a way that it takes it beyond digital artists relying on commissions or commercial projects, that we can really have pieces stand by themselves and say that this is digital art. And I think that's amazing. Being a digital artist before NFTs was fun. Like you don't make a living, you know? Like it doesn't, it doesn't work. Like we need tokens, we need, we need tokens, <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, we need tokenization. Um, but if you look at kind of like, will digital art even matter? in a hundred years and I think I think you look at we have kind of two different paths right we have like 
seven dudes who made money selling JPEGs on the blockchain, or we kind of have what we are starting to embrace right now, which is for, in a very material way, we have expanded access to art, whether that is creating art, whether that is collecting art, whether that is experiencing art. And we flatten the art world tremendously. Like, you don't need to be related to a Gagosian in order to get a shot in the art world anymore. And I think because we've been able to include so many more people potentially in this world, what we're all doing matters more because of it. And the stories that come up are better. And it just, it matters because of how inclusive this space is. And it's one thing that in the history of art is actually significant. You know, uh, this isn't just another movement. This is something that actually means a big difference. It's a, it's a transformative change for artists around the world. And if that is the story that ends up being told about this, and it's not about monkey JPEGs, then all of a sudden everything that we're doing right now, see you BBA, you know, is, uh, you know, matters. And I think that the artists will be remembered and this will be an important part of our history, which just translates to everybody doing work now is in a much better position than they otherwise would be. And ultimately, you know, a hundred years, like that is something that is significant in art history. But I think this, is, this will require that this digital art is defended by collectors, by institutions, uh, by uh, big players. Even though initially it was its own movement on the side, it will have to be integrated to be remembered because that's how the system is and that's how it's always been. Yeah, I see this is also an interesting topic uh, with uh, IP and uh, yeah, CC0 because yeah, what you want ideally is that your art spreads as much as possible and so I guess as an artist you so it, you can do both but you sometimes you have a, a choice to make which is maybe to defend your, your idea what you said saying it's yours fighting for it so it's yours uh, making uh, the most of money out of it or you can decide to uh, yeah to spread it uh, to uh, maybe with CC0 uh, to collab with other people and I think yeah at some point you uh, there's uh, either you can be successful uh, and uh, make a lot of money doing your, your living by defending your, your ideas, or you can make them outlast you by uh, yeah, trying to spread them. And um, yeah, I think um, yeah, what, what a lot of uh, what's crazy and sometimes when I think about it, it, yeah, it, uh, it uh, strikes me is that uh, yeah, the space is very new when you, it's like, yeah, 10 years old and, uh, and uh, yeah, when you think on a long term, term perspective, most of the famous artists of today, it took, uh, yes, sometimes uh, centuries for them to, to have recognition. So, yeah, it's uh, almost a philosophical question. Yeah, do you want to be rich and successful during your lifetime or do you want to leave uh, a legacy? Yeah. I love it and I think it's an interesting point. Like. Uh, it doesn't have to be art that moves people with a dramatic story from a dramatic artist. I think when you look back and you look at a lot of museum collections, you look at a lot of these other things, it's what impacted the culture and what elements of this art movement were meaningful in the discussion of culture down the road. And that could be a lot of different things. It's a, it's a decent case for memes. It's a decent case for the JPEGs. Like, what actually changed culture? We're, we're in this era of AI, we're in the era of digital identity, we're in the era of blockchain provenance, which will become vastly more important as we, you know, move into the future here. So ultimately, like, what out of this, like, pool of things we're all dealing with that are all very new will be important in the future, and I think ultimately that's what's gonna be around for 100 years, so I don't think you can really discount anything in the space right now. I just think it's really important to consider, like, what will leave a meaningful cultural impact in the future? And uh, you brought up a point earlier about like if you stop tweeting, and I thought that was interesting too. Like if you stop tweeting, if you stop participating, it becomes very, very difficult, no matter who you are, to sustain the relevance required to continue onward. Um, I think it's gonna take most artists five or 10 years of work in this space to demonstrate a body of work, to demonstrate a narrative, to demonstrate a story. And I think if you check out, you maybe hit a, hit a large sale or something, congrats, but if you, don't, if you don't stick around, it's really hard to continue that story and to continue to sustain relevance in 
you know, ultimately, I think you uh, are on the path to being lost. It matters about being here, being present, and just trying and, you know, not necessarily have to try, but just impacting the culture, I think, is ultimately what everything comes down to. The impact is the biggest thing that I think it comes down to, and impacting culture for sure, but also at the end of the day, you have to impact individuals. Because when you impact the most individuals, I believe that's how you'll be really remembered. Because people will remember you on a personal level, if it's through the art style or if it's through you being on Twitter and being active. And I think the impact that we can have emotionally with art and art that resonates with, each, with us as individuals comes back to what Fidel said is like, we might have mediums in the future that we don't even know about right now. Like AI just came to be a thing. How can we even leverage this technology to create more impact? How can we create more pieces? How can we add, add different elements to pieces, maybe with AI, maybe in some new psychological breakthrough where we have Neuralink, I don't know, but we definitely will have more possibilities to have a big psychological impact to individuals, and I think that will actually start the cultural revolution. Or, or we'll all be dust. <laughs> it's a strong either or, it's a strong either or. We'll definitely remember that though. I mean, yeah, the thing, it's, talking about the future, it just changes, every day it changes. 10 years ago, you know, what is it, Tesla has a, a, a bot that you can buy for 20 grand coming out next year that, oops, you know, does things. 10 years ago, they couldn't even stand up. 10 years before that, I was learning maybe film photography, late 90s, you know, going through college. 10 years before that, I like, it just, it always changes so fast. This conversation we're having now won't be relative in a year. We were all in Lisbon last year. None of the things between last year and right now are things we thought we would be having a conversation about. You know, uh, actresses being sued because their voice is on the chat GPT now, uh, you know, movies. There was a red carpet film festival last night here, the AI, AI film festival. So I think art, the, the real art that's gonna be remembered in 100 years is the art that's still physically or digitally there, the one that still exists. Just like we find the shaving bowl of some guy from a 1,000 years ago, the only reason it's art is because we found it, we put it in a museum, it exists. So all the digital, if it's destroyed, if there's World War VIII, you know, any little tiny drawing by a five-year-old that exists in some gutter somewhere in a hundred years, those are gonna be the things I think that people will see as art. We'll try to maintain, but it's, <laughs> it's so fast. I think, I, think, I think we're gonna have a lot of art around in a hundred years. You yeah. know, it's not, it's not hard to like boot up. Even if Ethereum goes down, you can always just run a node to still access. You can't do new transactions, but you can still access the art. So I don't think we're gonna lose much art that way. I think we're more at risk of like minor things like rare art, like a scribe, like you know other platforms recently that have had to be rescued. Uh, so there's like some technical issues in the near term, but I think long term, like we'll have a lot of this stuff to choose from, and it'll really like we can't predict the future at all, you know. Like, if but I may. it's going to come down to like really just your gut instinct, whether you're a collector, whether you're an artist, like how many people like did the thing that you were supposed to do and it didn't work out, and the thing that you didn't, like, you just liked ended up working out best of all. I mean, everybody's had this experience. Like, ultimately, it's just gonna come down to, like, your instinct as an artist, your instinct as a collector, and I think those are the choices that are gonna age the best over time because there's something about your combined life experience that's gonna point you in the right direction with this stuff. And ultimately, we don't know what it's going to be, but I bet that if you're an artist or if you're a collector and you're going with your gut feeling on this, you're gonna be right more often than you otherwise would be. But you, you don't think there's gonna be some kind of a digital overhaul? I'm so sorry. Like marketplaces going, crypto going, some of the things we thought, you know, let's say, I guess my question is, do you all think that just being artists and creating the art is gonna be enough for that art to still be there in 100 years since all of the other act of God kind of things could happen to not have that happen. I think if you have a frozen metadata token, you're in trouble, right? I think that if you can't adjust the pointer, if the artist can't go back in and change the image, I think there will be issues with the IPFS, there will be issues with Arweave, there will be issues with internet infrastructure. You know, God forbid you're relying, relying on like frames or some like really fragile infrastructure and in how you build your tokens. Um, the construction matters a lot. We lost a lot of work in net art. We lost a lot of work in flash art 
just because we don't have the technology to be able to display these older artworks now. So I think that we will lose a lot along the way from technological change. And I just think it's something that's really important to consider now instead of just kind of going blindly into the future being like, IPFS will work. Ordinals will be allowed to be left unchecked. You know, our weave is solid as long as you're just being very, and I guess it's part of the crypto ethos too. I mean, like we doubt everything. I feel like a lot of us are here because we doubted some very established ideas that you were supposed to believe and now we're all here. I think doubting the technological infrastructure will lead to you making better decisions and I think it'll lead to you making better decisions as an artist or as a creator if you just make sure to future proof your work in the best possible ways. Yeah, but I feel that on the other hand, we might dub the, the technical structure, but as time uh, uh, goes on, we have technical fragmentation and we have more and more like layer two blockchains and so most of them will probably not survive. And, uh, and also there's a competition because these are also technology companies behind with, uh, they want to raise funds and they want to have something new. So it fragments the market. And so I feel that uh, right now the artists have shown that they want to use all the opportunities they have, but on the other hand, they should also think about what will last and probably it's safer if they, if they uh, trust Ethereum than some other layer two uh, blockchain. Yeah, actually I know I started with that, the technical part of it, but I, I think the art that uh, should be remembered will still be there, you know. And but I, I, I think we'll have a, another uh, issue, which is we'll, there will be too much art, too much NFTs, because right now, uh, and it, at first it was quite hard to, to launch an NFT. You need to maybe to, to, to be able to write a smart contract, but now on base, everyone can launch, um, uh, can, uh, yeah, can mint NFTs. At, at some point, price was a, was a blocker. Uh, it's not anymore, and uh, yeah, so I guess we will see the same thing that, as you have maybe on streaming platforms, like you have too much uh, content, too much art uh, for, a, for a lifetime. So you have, um, I think there's also, a, so you, as an artist, I guess you can do uh, the best to, um, for your art to be remembered. Uh, I really love the, um, yeah, what you said about, I think it starts with the emotion, uh, with the collector. Like, Personally, as a collector, I'm much attached to the to the the works that I have a story with, and it can be very um, random. Like, uh, yeah, I had to pay. Uh, it was an auction, for example, a tenth auction, or it was uh, I don't know a lottery, uh, or it was uh, you had to fight uh, to negotiate for weeks for the um, for the thing and uh, for the for the piece. I also know, yeah, what. Um, uh, bright moment is doing so I, I never been there but uh, I've seen the video it looks great and I mean if you yeah you collect an NFT and you have uh, it's as associated with uh, yeah nice moments like seeing the memories actually I'm not just clicking on a, on a button uh, and it's in your wallet uh, yeah I think that's a great start and and yeah what I was going to say is that I think um, the actors of the space, like it lacks a lot of curation of the of the art, and um, yeah, I was discussing just this a uh, few minutes ago. Like right now, most of the time, if you ask someone to to show you a collection or to uh, to check for an artist, you yeah, you show you OpenSea, and OpenSea is a marketplace, and uh, it it does a in my opinion does a terrible job at discovery, curation, and displaying art, and. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, uh, yeah, the, um, uh, yeah, the actors on the space also have um, yeah, almost a responsibility uh, to, um, yeah, to do that, to help with that. To set the stage for viewing. And I think like uh, with my experience with our gallery in Prague, it's been really nice to create the events and create the experience around the art. And like people really remember it with the art but also with the experience work together. And I think that we're gonna see that more and more online because as you said, the marketplaces are not the ideal way to view art. You don't have a great time browsing OpenSea, let's be real, it's not that fun. But we're going to see the internet evolve in a way where you will go somewhere to view art. 
you will definitely have that place that you go to view art because right now, I'm sorry, it's not, it's not gonna be on Twitter, just scrolling through political posts, shit posts, some amazing art, more shit posts. I think it's gonna be somewhere where you go dedicated to view art. I know, I, 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 I love these two points. Um, you know, and this is why I think it's gonna be like five or 10 years before this really starts kind of settling out. Um, we don't have any real infrastructure for contextualization in the space. Uh, every writer in the space is really doing this as a hobby. You know, they want to contribute, so they write an article about an artist, they write an article about a show, but we don't have infrastructure in place. We don't have Artnet, we don't have Art News, we don't have Art Newspaper, we don't have organizations hiring writers to write about, contextualize the space and the artist. So it's really on the artist right now. You have to run a three-ring circus and make good art to make it work in the space right now. And there's a lot of very, very talented artists with very good work that just can't do that. I mean, there's a lot of artists that are just not as extroverted as they need to be at this moment in time to succeed, but they're here and they're making good work. And we just need a lot more writing, a lot more contextualization, a lot more curation, a lot more people talking about the space because discoverability is one of the biggest challenges that we have right now. And I hope it's something that we can kind of collectively figure out how to address sooner than later because if an artist can't make a living here, they have to go make a living somewhere else. And the art that we're gonna see in 100 years, I feel like we're gonna lose a lot of really good people and a lot of really good work unless we can do a better job of supporting many of the artists in the space. 100% amen to that because I think that if you take something away from this talk is go mint pieces that you like and mint pieces that you feel and mint pieces from artists that you feel because if we start following the hype all the time, I don't know if that's what we want to remember. In Every, everything, everything both of you just said. And I love, and your TL, that's exactly why it's like shit post, shit post, shit post, amazing art. Yeah, we, it feels sometimes like we don't know exactly how to keep making that happen where artists can have that space to be able to share and then when you think there's a, a, a viewing gallery or a virtual world or something that comes along that's gonna be able to show you some kind of art. And they do, you know, there's on cyber, there's, I mean, what was the other one two years ago? Showtime, you know, scrolling, wonderful art. But even then, there's no real platform where you can meet up. So we're forced to use different social media. And that right there is how we lose half the people just from the jump. People don't have time to live their real lives, do their real things, spend time with their loved ones, and at the same time, shit post, shit post eight hours a day on Twitter. But if you shut that off, like you said, if you shut off your social media, it's a rarity to be able to go along in this space. It's part of the job, you know? So hopefully that doesn't keep artists doing what they're doing, because like we said, if we lose all the artists along the way, there's not gonna be anybody around in 100 years. It's gonna be all digital art, in digital galleries with AI curators, curating AI artists, talking about shit post, shit post, you know, it's gonna be that way. Meme coin gallery coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no more humans. Yeah, I think it's not, not an easy problem to fix because right now, for example, if you, if you, are, if you have a Twitter account, like uh, as a collector, so I, I do, uh, yeah, I, I collect, but I also shit post, I, uh, I do meme coins, I do, yeah, you, you realize actually uh, the, 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 the tools we are using, social media we, you, we are using, um, encourage you to actually shit post and not uh, like uh, when you do a long post, when you uh, put picture, when you tag people, yeah, it doesn't work and it goes, uh, it disappears and, people, and also you have this attention span issue and uh, yeah, generally it's, uh, it's better to write a very short post than, uh, yeah, um, uh, the detailing you, you thought. So it's, uh, I don't have the solution, but I think it uh, may be a bit of patience. I think at some point, you know, it requires, uh, because that's uh, like a creation platform or something, that's not the easiest way to be, to make money in this space. I guess that's why uh, no one is really building it with, uh, with uh, money, with uh, something big, because yeah, it's easier to build uh, another marketplace um, uh, than a uh, yeah, creation platform. That's very short-sighted, and I guess, yeah, we'll see uh, probably some of the um, marketplace or the tools we are, that are popular right now, uh, yeah, will disappear because the model is outdated and people will uh, 
yeah, we'll move to, to something more long term. And uh, yeah, maybe those things will be, will be built. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I guess right now we are just in this spot where uh, uh, the space is still very new and you still have, uh, you have some people pushing for a long-term horizon. But again, it's long-term horizon when, uh, when the space is uh, less than a decade old. It's, uh, yeah, it's crazy, but, um, uh, but yeah, I think you have to survive. The artists have to survive, you know, during this uh, period of time that's uh, quite, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, we gotta traditional. Use, yeah. We gotta use what we have, but I think we have to wrap it up, guys. Yeah, I was just gonna oh, say, do? they got a guy waving. I thought there might be some kind of, like, uh, Oscar music. Yeah. <laughs> the start of the go. Been a pleasure, man. I love doing it. It was awesome, guys. Cereal. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, the conversation. Thank you all for listening. Um, you know, like, we're, we're doing this all together. Thank um, you, yeah. This, this matters, so thank you for coming. Keep creating, keep creating, keep supporting artists, that's for sure. Thank you so much.